Next, we have the Harrison Rezzo Ullman Result. Now, this is not a formal security model. This is, in fact, the result of an analysis of uh, a formal model, uh, the Graham Denning model. Uh, now, all that you need to know about the Graham Denning model is that it had uh, eight operations. Uh, it had, uh, you know, like the Bella Padula model and, and Biba, uh, the concept of a secure state and then eight different operations that you could do uh, or, or functions uh, that you could perform and still maintain a secure state. And, and Harrison, Rezzo, and Ullman were analyzing this and uh, trying to determine if it was true. And their result was that if the, uh, the functions were constrained to a single operation each, then, then yes, uh, you could, in fact, determine that yes, uh, these, these functions were allowed, that they, they would preserve security. But uh, some of the uh, functions in the uh, Graham Denning model were not constrained to a single operation each. And in situations where the functions are uh, not constrained, to a single operation, where we have multiple uh, operations possible within the function, then you, you cannot determine from uh, logical mathematical analysis whether or not this, this should be in the formal model because it, uh, it cannot guarantee that you maintain the secure state. And so this is... Um, in a sense, formal, mathematical, logical proof of something that we have to keep stressing over and over again, and that is complexity is the enemy of security. Uh, this is a, a formal model that, uh, and, and the analysis of that formal model, which actually extends uh, not just to the, the uh, Graham Denning model, but uh, is in fact it now it, itself a, a statement about security is if uh, your your functions are constrained to a single operation you can determine whether or not this is safe whether whether or not this uh, maintains secure state whether or not this is allowable as a secure function um, in a for formal model and, and therefore you know it is this uh, something that you can uh, implement that, that gives you guidance uh, that you can rely on in terms of maintaining security. And it, you know, if, if it's constrained to a single operation, uh, then yes, you can, you can tell. Well, it's, it's not just, you know, if it's constrained to a single operation, is it safe? But if it's constrained to a single operation, can your analysis tell you and, and determine with, with accuracy, with reliability, that yes, uh, this is safe or, or no, this is not safe? You, you still have some analysis there. But if, if you have functions that are combinations of operations or potentially combinations of operations, then you cannot determine that. You cannot, um, you cannot say of those functions, uh, yes, they're allowable, no, they're not allowable, with, with certainty. You're, you're going to have to do something else. Um, they, you, you do not know, you cannot tell for certain that these are inherently safe or secure functions or not. So, once again, you know, 
keep it simple. Uh, complexity, even at the, the most basic level of formal models and abstraction, complexity is the enemy of security. How much more then uh, do, do we have to pay attention to this principle when we are dealing with complex and increasingly complex systems. Uh, and this is, this is why. Uh, one of the reasons, you know, it's, it's sort of a, uh, a formal principle guiding our, our statements, our, our uh, principle uh, that, you know, you just cannot have a uh, 100% guarantee of security in most situations because uh, our systems are complex. Um, we have to have layers of security. We have to have defense in depth. Um, we have to have the concept of risk analysis and risk management and risk management includes the the management of residual risk that in any kind of system in the real world we have uh, some element of risk and our our operation our principle our uh, our risk management our job is to determine what the actual level of risk is, what the uh, protections we have in place do to reduce that risk, and what we do in the uh, uh, in in real systems in the real world to assess what the residual risk is and what additional controls and safeguards we have to put in place. Bearing in mind, of course, our cost-benefit analysis. We just can't keep adding layers forever. Um, at some point, we have to determine you know, what is the best use of our resources? What is the best mix of safeguards and controls to reduce our risk to a tolerable level?